We're sitting on a time bomb of a major typhoid and cholera outbreak among our patients and among the volunteers. We're desperate. Another day and more crises. The Cobble Together Volunteer Clinic where we've been working is maxed out. Too many injured, too few facilities. I am sitting on top of an amputated arm and an amputated leg because I have nowhere to take them. The UN owns the land where the clinic's been staged and needs it back. Take a list of the names that you're doing, okay? okay. So the whole operation will move, patients and doctors alike, on Monday or Tuesday. On three, one, two, three. The worst cases are finally being moved. This UN bus was our evacuation ambulance, even though its doors were too narrow for the stretchers. Make sure he doesn't fall off. During the jarring, dusty three-mile drive, an infected patient nearly went into cardiac arrest. Drop the camera. Here. The second one, who's second most critical, is a five-year-old boy. Then um, this girl has a pelvic fracture. We don't, we don't even have um, the ability to really stabilize her. So we'll take this lady yeah. and we'll take the one, there was a, a kid here as well. But we arrived to an incredibly welcome site, the Israeli field hospital, the Rolls Royce of emergency medical care. Set up in just eight hours and able to handle 500 cases a day. About 50% of the patients are women, 30% are children. Uh, we've been in Kosovo, we've been in Turkey, in India, in Kenya. It's the biggest disaster I have seen. Patients are still being rescued and they are being brought into these medical units sicker and sicker and sicker, almost all of them with severe infections on this, the fifth day of this disaster, Jeff. Jen, one thing we've talked about here is the language barrier between patients and caregivers, yet they're still establishing these personal relationships. They are, and that's been one of the most incredible things to watch, actually. One of the nurses that we've been working with has been caring for a young man with a fractured leg for about two and a half days, uh, almost straight, and she herself is a mother of four daughters. She wears a charm for each of those girls around her neck. And when, he, and when this young man noticed them, he said, you can call me your son. So I think it really speaks to the relationship that's developing. The Haitian people are very stoic and they're also very grateful. It is remarkable. Well, thanks for your work, Jen. Jen Ashton tonight, thank you.